The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Hello, welcome back to another Impact Lounge review of last week. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. Hello. How's it going, Adam? Yeah, not too bad. You left me hanging for a second there. I thought you disappeared on me before we even started. Anyway, yeah, all's good. All's good. And uh, if this is your first time stopping by this review, then please, uh, you know, do make sure to stick around. Check out what else is on the the Impact Lounge channel because we've got some uh, fantastic content on there, including exclusive interviews. So have a check uh, check around and uh, hit that subscribe button. We're, we're narrowing on 4,000. We're nearly at 4,000 subscribers. We're going to try and obviously ramp that up before the end of the year and before Bound for Glory. So if you if you like what we do, make sure that you follow us on Twitter, retweet us, like our pages on Facebook. We want to get more listeners so we get bigger and better exclusives in the future. So uh, if this is your first time stopping by, the way that uh, we usually roll on this show is uh, we give you the full impact review, which will be coming up. But before we do that, we usually have a trivia question. And we also answer your questions that are sent in. And when we say sent in, uh, we ask you to post them on the YouTube page uh, in the comments section. Just ask us anything you like. It could be about the product. It could be personal. Hey, we haven't done any of those yet. Maybe I'll ask you a personal question later, Rob. Uh, maybe not this week. Maybe another time. But yeah, make sure you do leave some comments for us. And although they were, we're a bit thin on the ground this time, uh, Ro and I am sure we'll pick out some things from the show that we can expand on uh, in exchange for for lack of comments this week so let's dive into the trivia question first of all uh so my question was who did chris adonis and eli drake have a bit of a run-in with last year and specifically what i wanted to know is there was two bodybuilders who jumped the guardrails and had a bit of a showdown with them and this went on for two three weeks i don't think it ever ended up in a match uh it just ended up with chris adonis and eli drake being humiliated a little bit to be honest and it was to, there to promote another pop TV show. And I want to know what the name of that show was. And uh, we had quite a few right answers. Uh, obviously, way too easy for you. Don't worry, we're going to go back to Rose's question this week, which will be incredibly hard. I never get them. But the question, uh, the answer was Swole Mates. And well done to Brandon Williams, who was the first to answer. Although Jim Howell Francis was only uh, about 10 minutes behind him. So unlucky there, Jim Howell. Hopefully, you'll be quicker off the mark this week so Ro what's our question for this week all right all right all right um I'm gonna try to make this as hard as possible <laughs> no just kidding um anyways okay the first question the first clue I should say is I once was trying to compete in the x division by trying to make weight not realizing that the x division has no weight limits I also have been in impact under a different well team at the time under a different gimmick and finally i was in a feud with a former world champion over something that i felt was rightfully mine and caused me to leave impact for the time being who am i i think i know this one for a change <laughs> <laughs> it's not very often i get these but i think i've got this one so there you go, folks. If you know the answer, make sure you leave it in the comments section. Uh, you don't win anything except for uh, the respect of your listeners and of Ro and myself, of course. So um, I think you had a question you did want to ask before we jumped into the show this week, Ro. What was it? Yeah, um, it's going to be one. It's going to come up in one of the segments. I don't want to ask it out of turn right now. I figure once we uh, discuss the segment, then I'll ask it. Fair enough. Okay, well, what we usually do, what we usually dive into the main event first and then review the the rest of the show afterwards so um what did you think of the show before we look at the main event you know i thought it was better than last week um i enjoyed it but i still feel like there hasn't been enough on these shows to really get us prepared for bound for glory i think the card is starting to shape up relatively well which is good because later on and i'm sure we discuss we'll discuss it there was a match announced that i'm really uh amped up for but it's just it just feels like it's missing something i really just feel like at these tapings they need to do something where it's like boom like okay and gets everyone uh geared up for bound for glory but it was better than last week to me yeah absolutely i i, I felt exactly the same about it i mean this this week's show did absolutely fly by i thought it was really really quick which is usually a sign of a good show for me you know if you don't realize where the time's gone it means that you quite enjoyed it and, and although i did enjoy it 
it just doesn't seem to have that spark at the moment. There's nothing must see about it. There's, you know, nothing that I'm thinking, wow, that was amazing. You know, I want to wind that back. I want to, I want to talk about this on social media or anything like that. You know, that this, this was just a, I dare say a filler show, but a very good filler show, if that makes sense. Would you agree? Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll 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 dive straight into. It. Actually, I, I I've got a question before we look into the show, uh, because it, it, it's not going to come up during you know the the conversation of impact. But one of the things that hit the news this week happened over in WWE, uh, and my question is around the individual it happened to. But I don't know if you saw this, but um, in the divas section, we had Brie Bella kick someone in the head and knock her out, and. Uh, social media for wrestling for the most part this week has been centered around you know what you know is she any good is brie bella any good you know she should be fired she should be on telly all these kind of things first of all did you see the spot um i seen it on a uh, social media that's how i uh, heard about it and then that's when i was able to see what actually occurred yeah so, same as me but my question is is that if they did get rid of the bella twins and i know it's very unlikely because daniel bryan's married to one and I don't know if John Cena's still going out with the other one or not. They seem to be on and off all the time. But would you want to see the Bellas in Impact at all? No. <laughs> I'm sorry to really? say it like that. Um, to me, they're, they're uh, WWE written all over. I couldn't see them going to any other company. Let me add something on that because it did bother me. You know, the criticism that she got, while I would say in some instances it's fair because, you know, people look at wrestlers, especially if they've, been seasoned i don't know how many years they've had underneath their their belt now and when you make you know you injure someone you know it you shouldn't do that but the thing that irritates me is with some of their fans and i say some because i can't i'm not speaking for all you know it it's all depends on who they like and who they don't like like i just i, I look at it like this if becky injured charlotte in the match oh it happens, you know, Charlotte should know what she's getting into, you know, it, you know, it's wrestling. But if Charlotte were to injure Becky, since a lot of people don't like Charlotte, oh, she'd be getting death threats, you know, left and right. So, you know, yeah, it's unfortunate that the stuff happens, but I feel like the criticism that Bree's getting is more from people that don't like Bree as a, as a performer than it is actually mad at what she did. And that's just what I don't like because... If you're upset, you should be upset at anyone getting injured. You know, if there's someone who you don't like, you know, these are performers. You might not like the character, but you have to be able to disassociate that from the human being. If they were to get, get injured, you know, well, you're going to be like, oh, good. They deserve it. Now they're off the TV. Like, that was just a thing that bothered me. Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. And I, and I wholeheartedly agree that, you, you know, you should distance yourself whether you like the person or not, you know. Uh, I think in this instance, I do think that she most probably should be off TV because, you know, I saw those suicide dives a couple of weeks ago, which were very funny, by the way. She basically botched two suicide dives. Um, so <laughs> if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out, listeners, because that's funny. But, uh, well, I say it's funny. You know, she could have hurt herself. But at the same time, you know, this is someone who, let's face it, was never a fantastic wrestler anyway. I don't even know why they're making a big deal about it. You know, I really don't. It, it would almost be like um, uh, if um, Amber Nova came back in Impact and they made such a song and dance about it all over social media, you know, saying, well, hey, Amber Nova's back. You know, she, she was amazing. Well, no, she wasn't really. You know, they, I don't think they were ever that good, other than the fact they were twins. But this way, if they'd have been single, if they hadn't been twins, I don't think they would have ever got as far as they did anyway. Yeah, that I think was... it's the whole male fantasy twin thing, isn't it? Well, I just think that was just the attraction, you know, for them getting signed originally. I forgot where they came from, but I just remember when they first came on board and then they departed and they came back. But you know what it reminds me of, too, just to harken back on what I was saying. If you remember with Seth Rollins, and I remember because during this time I was watching, you know, extensively. But when he, um, I think he did a knee to John Cena and broke John Cena's nose. Nobody had no issue with it. Eh, it's, it happens, you know. But the moment that he hurt Finn Balor, oh, he's reckless. And then he, when he hurt Sting, like, that's what I'm saying. People pick and choose, and that's what I don't like. Like, you shouldn't want to see any of these wrestlers getting hurt, regardless of, you know, still a human behind that character. But it's just, it's funny. Like, you know, if Roman Reigns were to get hurt tomorrow by Braun Strowman, uh, oh, well. 
you know, because you don't like Roman Reigns. Why you got to be like that? But, you know, that's the that's some wrestling fans for you. But by, by the way, listeners, uh, Roe is the biggest uh, Roman Reigns mark out there. He loves him. Hey, hey, he loves I, himself. I, 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 that's the only reason he. I said I'll only watch if they put the belt on him. I'm dead serious. I do like him, and I don't care if nobody's on my side. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say, oh, yeah, talking of twins, uh, would you like to see the Blossom Twins back in TNA or Impact, I should say? Do you remember them? That's not a was it Lenny Lane or I don't know who 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 was it who was the group consist of? No, the Blossom Twins. They they were at the they on the same boot camp that um, uh, Spud won. Yeah, so I don't remember. They were in the boot camp. You don't remember? I oh, fair enough. Okay, well that, that should have been a trivia question. I've blown that one there. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into this speech stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll start with the main event, and um, yeah, I, I I really quite enjoyed this. And I'll explain why in a second, but let, let me get your take on it first. So we had Eddie Edwards and Johnny Impact versus Moose and Killer Cross with Austin Aries at, at the side. So so what did you think of this, first of all? I thought, and I know we'll probably dive into this more, but I really thought the pre-match promo that especially Killer Cross cut was phenomenal. I really, like the word, his uh, vocabulary that he was using to describe Johnny Impact. Um, that was some awesome stuff. Um, as far as the match, you know, I thought this was good. I was really interested to see how Killer Cross and Moose use, worked as a unit. You know, as far as Impact and Eddie Edwards, they worked as well as I anticipated. But, you know, nice back and forth all around with Moose getting a big win. And another thing, too, to Moose's credit, you know, Moose has a unique way of hitting the spear. I like that. And it just seems like it hurts more than your traditional hug that we see some people do when they deliver it. it, it it's like a, a flip or something, isn't it? As he delivers it, he kind of flips himself over or something. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's very good, though. You're quite right. The I, I'll come on to the bits I don't didn't like about this, but you're, you're absolutely spot on. We'll, we'll talk about the promo in a little while, but Killer Cross is just fantastic. I even like Moose as a heel has been a revelation as well. Um, but in stark contrast to that, the promo by Johnny Impact had me laughing for all the wrong reasons, you know, with his, uh, what, he, what he called them, um, I can't remember, do, there, there was a couple of douches, then he called him a, a turd cutter, and it just makes me laugh every time he delivers a promo because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, his choice of words. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I thought the match was excellent, and, and Eddie Edwards has been, you know, great in this as well. The, the weakest link is absolutely Johnny Impact, and it's a shame, you know, that I, I've talked about it before, and because he hasn't been on the show for quite some time, I'm going to repeat, go back over old Gren that I used to talk about. But the thing is, his offense just doesn't look like it hurts. Because he's throwing in all this spinny shit, you know, these, these parkour moves, it, it actually looks like it takes away from the impact of the move and, and how much it would hurt. And, you know, a couple of times he did things, and you just think, ah, oh, man... <laughs> I don't want to see him as world champion. I really don't want to see him as world champion. And I know he's most probably is going to win it because he's had lots of chances. He failed last year. But I think he would be a, a terrible baby face champion. I really do. You know, I don't think it's so much he'd be terrible. I think I had no problem with him winning it. But I just don't feel like this was the stage for him to get his win. I think his win, it could have been at, you know, some of the impact specials or well, pay-per-view like shows that they have, you know, whether it was uh, under pressure. I know he, I don't think he had challenged there, but, you know, a show like that, I think you could have done a title change there. But I, I really think we're getting it at Bound for Glory. I, and I know I said this with Moose, but I would be surprised otherwise because as great of a work Aries has been as champion, you know, you wonder who's going to dethrone him. You need some some kind of baby face to dethrone him. And, you know, they I guess they can feud after. But, yeah, I, I don't really have too much of a problem with him. I just hate that he's getting an opportunity once again at Bound for Glory once again. Yeah, the, just going back to the actual match itself as well, uh, a cu couple of things to note in there. But um, I really like the way that the three bad guys, the three heels in the match, are... Absolutely, they have their own characters and they don't rely on the other one saving them. You know, it's, we've seen it in the last few weeks, Austin Aries. You know, the other guys haven't really interfered. You know, when they've been on ringside, Austin Aries did come into this match, but it was more to cheat as opposed to save them. And, you know, 
that they're almost being treated as equals, the three of them, which is great to see, you know, because often you're seen as lackeys, but they're not at all. They're just seen as three people who are, um, you know, just equally as good, but one of them happens to be the champ. And there was one bit that I really liked in the match, which was um, when <laughs> uh, Johnny Impact was thrown up into the bleachers and failed to do a, a parkour thing where he nearly fell over on the stool. But then uh, he stood at the top and, and Killer Cross was just like, nope, I'm not coming towards you. <laughs> you know, I'm not letting you jump on me. And I, I just love that kind of psychology that Killer Cross shows that, you know, he's not a stupid wrestler. Uh, and I, I just, it, it, it was excellent. Um, I just remembered the question I was going to ask you and the listeners. And uh, it was something that was brought up in commentary about David Arquette. And I don't know if you heard this part in the commentary. By the way, the commentary is fant- commentators are fantastic. In, you know, we go on about Don Callis all the time, but once again, it really adds to the product. Josh Matt, I, I don't like the way they've done the recording because it does sound like it's in a studio. It doesn't seem like it's live, although you do see them live in between shots. But the commentary seems like it's been dubbed later. Um, but they talked about David Arquette. I don't know if you picked up on this. It might have went over my head a little bit. I can't. I can't I, I'm sure it was in this match they talked about him, but I, I don't know if you remember much about David Arquette in the in the WCW days. Yes, um, unfortunately. But, <laughs> well, well, you see, th- th- that's where we're going to disagree tonight. This is the end time we're going to disagree, because I don't hate David Arquette for what happened, and if I was an actor and I loved wrestling and he genuinely loves the business, um, and you were told you're going to be WCW champion, of course you're going to do it, you know, and. I, you know, there's a lot of Vince Russo haters as well, you know, who absolutely hate anything to do with Vince Russo. And all I think that the guy, I, I don't like him as a person. I really don't like Vince Russo as a person, mainly because he's always ignored all my emails I've sent him uh, asking for an interview. But I, I don't like him as a person. But I think at the time he had a brilliant mind for it. And although, you know, he talked badly about products now, I actually really like Vince Russo's mind for the wrestling business. And to put it on a Hollywood star, you know, uh, the belt and to gain publicity, I think was a really quite a genius move at the time. Now, jumping forward, David Arquette has resurfaced recently. I don't know if you know about this, but he's been training for the last 13 months um, intensively. And he's now, I can't remember which um, division he's in, uh, sorry, which promotion he's in, but he's going to be at Border City Wrestling. That's that's why we got onto this. I remember now. That's why Don Callis mentioned it because it's the 25th anniversary of Border Border City Wrestling, uh, and he's going to be wrestling there. So my question to you, in a very long-winded way, is would you like to see David Arquette in Impact Wrestling? Um, I mean, to what capacity? I mean, are you talking that have... As an active wrestler? <sighs> I mean, you know, I don't think too many people... Uh, well, I don't know. Do you think? Do you think a lot of people are familiar with his Hollywood work, because, you know, when I think of him, I think of the old Scream films. And I mean, I know this, you know, some of these fans are of a younger ilk. So, you know, during that time, they might have been, you know, for all I know, still in the womb, might not even have been been in in the world during that time. But, you know, I, I don't know. And, you know, just to, you know, piggyback off what you were saying, as far as them putting the belt on him back in WCW, for me, because I was a big WCW fan, I think why it didn't go over as well is because WCW started having a string. Of, they started making a string of bad decisions. So I think if that was just a one-off, I think it would have been fine. But, you know, you think about, you know, when the, how they ended Goldberg streak and then the finger poke of doom. And, you know, it was just countless things happening. And then just to have that, it just, I think it just left a bad taste. But to your question, I, I mean, I don't know what can he add. And I'm always going to say this and, you know, I want your take on it you bringing him on board at the expense of who because you know for him to be on and get tv time that that's going to cost somebody who might be on tv or trying to get on tv not getting tv time so what what is it that you think Uh, okay well uh, a lot of things to respond to on (laughs) it's good we have a question at the beginning but now we're suddenly getting into a a different thing completely which is great because i I love this topic um first of all think of poke of doom once again, one of my favorite things in wrestling. <laughs> Seriously, if I was booking a wrestling show, that would happen every other week with me. Um, <laughs> but, then, you know, once again, that just shows how different fans take different angles, you know, because I think 
Singapore do was a brilliant, a genius thing to do. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Anyway, but um, back to our care. If they brought him in, I actually don't think he would cost them any money at all. Uh, you know, when I say any money, any substantial money. The reason being is this guy, he, he's pretty made anyway. You know, I don't think he needs to work. Um, as you said, is he a huge star these days? Most probably not. But I think he genuinely loves the industry. And I think he would be, he would be happy to wrestle on the second biggest wrestling promotion on TV as a straight wrestler. Without the David Arquette baggage, without the, the jokiness all around it, all these kind of things, I think he would do it for, for what do you call it over there, scale? Well, I don't know what it's called. You know, just for, for, for the same as any other wrestler. I, I don't think he would be saying, I'm David Arquette, I'm a Hollywood star, you have to, you know, give me a massive contract. So, um, so for, from who would be left out, I don't think anyone would be left out. If you're talking about TV time, yep. Yeah, Possibly, you know, some people might be pushed to the background, but we've already seen that with DJ Z and they do need to freshen things up, uh, you know, because we are now starting to see the same wrestlers featured every week. And, you know, some people are being missed out. So so for me, I have no problem with him coming in. In fact, I would actually welcome it. Now, with regards to draw star power, has he got any these days? Most probably not. However, however, although young wrestler, uh, young viewers now in the, you know, well, when was Scream? 20 years ago? Something like that. Um, would anyone know him? Youngsters? Most probably not. But the mainstream press would pick up on it. I honestly, truly, truly believe that it would be a big thing in, in mainstream media if he was to show up on Impact. And even on, on wrestling, you know, dirt sheets, you know, they've been talking about him in, in as I said, I don't know if it was MLW or something else or Border City Wrestling or wherever it was. They've been talking about it. If he showed up on Impact, Everyone would be going back to the WCW days. And what is it? Bischoff said, controversy creates crash, cash. I even said. Um, you know, and I don't think in this instance it's bad controversy because it's a lot different to when he was in last time where he wasn't a wrestler. He was a Hollywood star. Now he's been training and he can, he can do things. So for me, it's, it's win, win, win. Uh, I, I would love to see him in impact. And... You know, BQ and I quite often um, agree on a lot of our wrestling views and wrestling thoughts. I've got a feeling that he would completely disagree with me on this one. Hopefully, he'll say something in the comments below. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to let him know later on that that we, we've called him out on this one. So, what, what do you think? Would you? So, for, for me, it's a yes. W would you want to see him or not? Uh, you know, I really don't have an opinion on it. I mean, you know, to his credit, since he's been training, I don't think he'll come across as you know, just a celebrity. But once again, I just think him coming in, whose spot is he taking? And so I, I, I don't know. I really don't have an answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Bob. Let me ask you a question. This is our question of the week. Well, first of all, what do you think about David Arquette? And would you like to see him in impact, whether it be short term or long term? Just let us know what your thoughts are and what you'd do with someone like Arquette if you picked up the phone to you and say, I'm ready to commit to your company. What would you do? Anyway, um, yeah, back to uh, the main event. I think we've, we've pretty much covered it. But um, is there any, any other thoughts before we dive into the rest of the show? No, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah, so uh, how, how far in? We're, we're already about 25 minutes into this show, and we're now finally starting to talk about the impact. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so we had obviously had our, our usual highlights package, and that's one thing that impact do very, very well. You know, you don't see this on WWE t TV, and I, I know you don't like to talk about them much, Ro, but, you know, I think we have to talk about them at times. But bearing in mind they've got five hours worth of TV, I'm amazed they don't do more recaps at the beginning of each show each week. You know, just say, this is what happened last week. Let's see what happens this week. And I think Impact, that's absolutely spot on. So, um, but getting into the show, we started off with Tessa Blanchard versus uh, Fabi Apache. Uh, I was quite critical of Fabi last week. What did you think of this? Oh, this was pretty good. Um, you know, credit to Tessa. I mean... You know, I think she's, you know, from just what I've seen in her time in Impact, I think any match they can place her in, she can make it, you know, even a performer, and I'm not saying Fabi's one, but even a performer who's not up to par, she can make the match respectable. And I thought it was good. I mean, I think Tessa was really dominant, and I think that's what needed to be done with her being knockouts champion. 
but you know Fabi did enough. Like I, we seen her bust out uh, the um, Daniel's old finisher. Uh, I think I don't know if he still uses it, the Angel Wings, and I thought that was nice. And then we also seen Tessa do the Codebreaker from the Turnbuckle, and then just the way that Tessa's hitting that buzzsaw DDT, man, it's reminding me so much of how Raven used to hit it, where he just hit it out of nowhere. And I think with a finisher, you want that. But uh, nonetheless, a you know, nice back and forth match, surprisingly good. But uh, Tessa gets the win, looking like the dominant champion that we expected. Well, the one thing I've been quite surprised by is that um, that Tessa has been quite happy in the same way Brian Cage was happy during his world tour in, in letting the, the, you know her opponents get some offense in most of the time, and uh, you know she's not she doesn't want to just go into squash matches, which is good. I, I was a bit disappointed by this it was certainly better than last week against alicia um edwards but but at the same time if, if she's the top knockout or w- w- female wrestler i don't know what i don't know what the, the term is in, in mexico and triple a if she's the top one then oof, I, i'm sorry but that division can't be very good because i don't think she's that much of a wrestler and you know i'm critical of ali all the time and we'll talk about this later on as well but i think ali's wrestling stinks but you know, this was on par with that. You know, that she did some nice. There was one move that she did which I've never seen before in a wrestling ring, and I thought was excellent. And and I'd like to see someone like Tessa or, or any or even a male wrestler take this on as a finisher. But it was um like a reverse figure four, which I thought was a really interesting move. You ever seen anyone do that before? Um, I think, and they used it as a transition move. I think it was either Finley or Shawn Michaels at one point. Okay. I just thought it was really interesting, and you know, uh, as you said, it was it was good to see the angels' wings. That was a nice move, and um, you know, I thought we we're going to get. <laughs> I did think for a second that that was a finisher. I don't know what a finisher is, but anyway, um, Tessa though once again looks great. Uh, I don't know if I like the uh, what's it the top rope code break. I think she calls it the Magnum. Uh, I I can't really see that move coming off. I, I don't really understand what it really adds to a normal code breaker. In reality, I don't think that move would hurt any more than, than a normal code breaker. It certainly would hurt Tessa more giving it. But um, if that's going to be one of her finishers, then well, fair play to her. It's a hard move to pull off, but she did it very, very well. What was disappointing was uh, Fabi's taking of the, the buzzsaw, DDT. Uh, once again, <laughs> it, it didn't look like it hurt at all. It was, it, and it wasn't poorly executed. It was just, it was poorly executed by Fabi. Do you agree? Yeah, you know what? If you notice, I'm trying to think. Who was the person we said? Oh, Kiera is the one who can take. It seems to take it the best. But we see with yeah. Tessa sometimes. There's sometimes where the person takes it well, and then as you see, I don't know if you see this, but where it's like. Tessa actually yanks them into position to get it right. And I felt like we've seen this in this match too. Like she just kind of just uh, yanked Fabi to get it correctly because maybe Fabi wasn't positioned right. So it's kind of like either you're going to position yourself or Tessa's going to position your, uh, she's going to position you herself. But, but yeah, so uh, it's, it's a shame because it's such a great finisher. And as you said, the one good thing about Kiara is that she does take it like a champ. Um, anyway, so at the end of the match, we had, uh, what's her name? Taya come out, not come out, but appear on the screen and cut a promo half in Spanish, uh, and half in, in, uh, English. Am I allowed to say English? American? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> in the language we speak. And, uh, yeah, she challenged her to Bound for Glory match, which, uh, as BQ predicted on his, uh, who he thought was going to be the, the the person who was going to be challenging her. So well done to BQ for, for predicting that one. You know, I have some thoughts before I, uh, you know, give my opinion on it because I am a Taya fan. But do you feel she's doing a, a gimmick change? Because I felt like in this promo, she came across, she didn't come across as the same Taya Valkyrie. And maybe that's in part because she's in Mexico and I think her character in Mexico is different. But I kind of sense a little bit of a face turn. So I was wondering is maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, are we going to get a different Taya come bound for glory? Did, did you get that vibe? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I talked about this when we, we had a teleconference call with her. That She comes over almost like a, a, a bimbo you know, like, um, you know, someone from Clueless or something like that, you know, in the way that she speaks. So could very well be. What, what was annoying, and, and I find this happens quite a lot, it was the same with the the Joe Hendry uh, video last week, is that they just seem to record some of these things in the weirdest places. It was like it was in 
you know, a hotel bathroom that she was recording this thing. <laughs> Do you get? Do you know what I mean? It's just weird. Sometimes they just feel, oh wait, shit, we better do a promo. Uh, where are we? Oh, I, I can't. I'm, I'm in my bedroom. I oh, doesn't matter. We'll just put the camera on. Don't worry. But but the units in shot. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. Just keep going. But this is your big thing for Bound for Glory. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. Carry on. You know, and it's, it's it annoys me because that you know sometimes their production values just let them down. You would never see WWE doing a promo like that. It would be much bigger production. And and it's this is nothing to do with budget. This is just it seems like it's been shot on the fly. You know, and the one thing I'll say is, you know, why is it hard for us to get a number one contenders match anymore? Like all of a sudden, just these random challenges. And, you know, I think for Taya, you know, to be in this position, while it's good because it gives you a new challenger in the knockouts division, you know, I would have liked to see her on TV and win a, a, a number one's contendership match because now, and I, I've seen this, you know, poked around and I even joked with this BQ. I mean, would you be surprised to see her and Johnny Impact walk out Bound for Glory with championships? Uh, uh, I don't think Tess is going to lose it. I, th I think Aries will, but yeah, they might try and do their, um, what do you call it? You know, the, their Benoit Guerrero moment exactly. where they hug in the middle of the ring. But uh, if they were going to do that, you'd think they would do Bound for Glory in a place where it means something to them, you know, such as in Mexico, if they're holding it there in a massive stadium. But who knows? I hope they don't go down that route. I have no problems with Tyre as a wrestler or character or anything like that. So I would have no problems with winning it. But I, I just, no, I, I don't want Johnny Impact to win. Let's face it. It's all down to that. Um, anyway, by the way, I'm convinced that people, people at Impact Creative listen to this show. Because last week I talked about Moppy making a comeback in the Desi Hit Squad scene. This week, Eddie Edwards calls his kendo stick Kenny. I'm telling you, they're, they're getting ideas from me. They're getting ideas from me, Rob. <laughs> so the next segment was Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards backstage talking about his best friend, Kenny, and, and Johnny Impact. So uh, what did you make of this? Uh, it's fine. I mean, it's really nice what they've been able to do with Eddie's character because, you know, we thought about during his whole feud with Callahan that he would, like Eli Drake would say, get lost in the sauce. But, you know, they found a role for him and him and his new buddy, Kenny. Um, hopefully Impact doesn't get too carried away with it where we're getting tag team matches where just say it's Moose and Killer Cross versus Eddie and Kenny. But um, who knows? <laughs> That's money right there. That is money. I'm telling you. <laughs> Seeing somebody wrestle a candlestick, that, <laughs> that might be up there. <laughs> Well, I, I think that we might have, uh, you know, Moose put uh, Kenny in a wood chipper, you know, or something like that, you know, like they did with Moppy. So they, they, I tell you what, if they go down that route, I, I'm sure Vince Russo is back on creative. But hey, anyway, carry on. Yeah, no, but not a problem. Um, you know, the, the one thing I thought that they would do just because we notice now with Alicia, they, you know, uh, announce her as Alicia. They don't announce her as Alicia Edwards. I thought they were trying to, while, you know, we all know that they're married in real life, that they were trying to kind of like separate them. So seeing the interactions, I guess it just kind of confused me because you know, I thought Alicia was going her, her separate ways. So, I mean, not that it's a problem, but I don't think we always need to see them in backstage segments. Like we know that they're married because we don't see that with Taya and uh, Impact. Johnny Impact. So there's no need just because somebody's together in real life to always pair them in segments. I think you let Alicia compete in the knockouts division and let Eddie do his thing. Well, I, I agree with all that except for the fact I don't want to see Alicia compete because she's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll tell you what I really think. <laughs> no, um, I'll tell you what would be interesting. And once again, we're getting fantasy booking here. But do you reckon that he's going to keep talking about Kenny being his best friend? And uh, then it's going to lead to a bang for glory here, them saying, well, OK, Killer Cross and Moose are going to face uh, Edwards and his best friend. And he's leading out to make it. It's going to be him and Kenny. And then we have Davy Richards come back. That could be a there you go. That could be a way to bring Davy Richards back in. He, and he says, yeah, I told you it was my best friend. I told you my best friend is going to be with me. And then Davy Richards comes out instead of Kenny. You know, I don't know if they announced anything yet, but I'm of the mindset that 
if they, we get a match, it's going to be Eddie Edwards versus Moose. I think with Killer Cross, they're going to use him. They're going to use him in, in a position of strength. Like with the matches we're going to see him compete in, it's going to be either singles or tag. And then if it's tag, he if, the, if the, he's on the losing end, he's not going to be taking the fall. I, me, I think they really want to protect him. Mm. One thing I did forget to say, by the way, about the main event, uh, just jumping back and forth here. But um, what has been interesting is both weeks that every time the heels go and try and cheat, they never they never do it. And when you think about to all the finishes in the matches recently, you know, Austin Aries last week, it was El Tejano, who was supposed to be the face of the match, was the one who used the rope. This week, it was Eddie Edwards, a face, using the kendo stick. And, uh, you know, as opposed to the heels using the weapons. So that was quite interesting. Anyway, um, after we had Johnny Impact cut his terrible turd cut promo, uh, we had another backstage segment with Sammy Callahan, which I quite enjoyed this. I thought it was really quite funny. Uh, um, the mini draw and uh, the medium draw, um, his face, how it changed. But it was actually Dave Chris. I don't know if you watched Dave Chris during this. Dave Chris was hilarious during the whole promo. I don't know if you watched this. Or yeah, or he, noticed he, that a, lot of, a lot of these segments, he's always, it looks like he doesn't join in until they're doing the, you know, closing out the promo. But he's always kind of like in the back, kind of side eye and everything, more of his brother, like, you know, what are you doing? You know, so I think that's all, that's always funny. But, <laughs> you know, we see Jake, you know, being a loyal Calad follower then until like, he announces, you know, you're going to face Cage. And then you just see Jake like, what? <laughs> like, he's, you know, he's like, you know, shit and bricks. And then, you know, finally he goes back and is like, I'm the mini draw. Cage, you're going to get it. It was, it was really hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was really quite well how they did this. And the, the one thing that, that one of, I think it was you and BQ mentioned on the review a few weeks ago, the OVE new entrance theme is terrible. Um, it's just noise, isn't it? But anyway, um, one thing I, I noticed that when, jake got into the ring with cage was how small he is and you don't realize well i say how small he is everyone looks small next to brian cage but um he he looked like he you know just massive if you don't ever get that when they can don't feel like oh jake chris is small but cage is massive and this was a good match uh really quite enjoyed this um even quite enjoyed the the uh suicide dive over the top it was a suicide dive but, you know the the flippy spin over the top. I can't think what it's called. Um, plancha. The plancha. There you go. Thank you. Uh, at the end, although my boy who was watching it with me did say, oh, he missed them. <laughs> he went too far. And, uh, you know, what, what they do is, is really good. But the match itself was quite competitive, although obviously it was all to do with interference left, right and centre. And that's the only reason why it was competitive. But uh, it was good, though. I quite enjoyed this. Yeah, um, and I think before this we got the Eli Drake promo, but uh, before we get into that, yeah, um, yeah, I thought Cage was going to run right through Jake. You know, Jake's fine. I know he does a lot of strikes, but his strikes look like they hurt. I know you talk about with Johnny Impact, a lot of his uh, moves say it looks like things that don't, don't look like it would hurt, but J when I see Jake connect on his kick kicks, it looks painful. So, and then, you know, he... You know, his cutter, he's one of the guys in Impact. I think he has the best top rope cutter by far. I love seeing him execute it. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't like the way Cage got the drill claw just because it looked more like a Mishinoku driver. I really thought with, with Jake being small enough, I would have loved Jake to kind of like do kind of like a cross body and Cage catch him kind of like how he caught Matt Seidel mm. and then deliver it like that because that just shows an excellent display of strength. You could have held him up there a bit longer or something like that before before dropping him down, I think, as well, because it did, at first you thought, oh, is that it? it was that the drill claw? You know, because it happened so quickly. But, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a very good match. And as you say, yeah, Jake's work is, is actually very good. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was good. And then, obviously, we had the, the other bit of interference there, which was uh, the Lucha Brothers kidnapping poor dave um and what, what was funny about this was that his hands were tied behind his back but as soon as they kicked him and he fell backwards on his chair you could see he put his arms out to, to stop himself falling so that, <laughs> that was once again a bit of bad cont continuity although you know i suppose you know you gotta save yourself from falling but yeah um a, a bit silly but but there you go uh it, it was all right and yeah it, it just continues the feud doesn't it it, it uh it just continues everything that's going on Yes, yes, agree.
Yep. So you're quite right. I missed out uh, about Eli and his um, backstage. Well, it wasn't backstage. It was around the streets of Mexico. And uh, I, I was watching it this morning. And, you know, I remember enjoying this segment. You know, he, he, I could just listen to him talk for an hour and a half, to be honest. He, he's brilliant at doing stuff. But what, what did he say he was going to be facing some Mexican talent next week? Or I, I can't remember what, what the gist of the promo was. <laughs> well, what made it funny, he, he noted that he's part Mexican. I think I forgot who he said his relative was, but it was, I know it was like Pablo Esteban Drake or something. Like that. Pablo Escobar Drake, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was dying on that. But I, I think the open challenge is going to be to a luchador. So, you know, once again, we're seeing him continue this open challenge, assuming this is going to lead up to something big at Bound for Glory. But, and I know some people have wondered like why aren't they using Eli Drake in a better light but I think this is good for him right now because it's helping rebuild his character I think you don't want to see somebody who's you know been on the losing end for the most part all of a sudden thrusted in the main event I mean yeah we've seen it before but I think this is not only helping build Eli back up but also too I think this is in the makings of him turning face down the road yeah absolutely and uh yeah I, I think the worry I have that if they have extended his contract for just a year, then it's taken him up to just out to bang for glory, in which case he'll be off. I don't think he will. I think it's probably a two-year contract, but he was very vague in some when I asked him. But, you know, if he's still got a year left, then that gives them a chance to, as you say, get back in, challenge Johnny Impact, and, um, oh, I was assuming it's going to be Johnny Impact, of course, uh, and and go, for, go from there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so next week it was like a, was it an open challenge again or, or something like that? I can't yeah. remember exactly what it was he was doing, but it was something along those lines. Okay, uh, so then we did have the uh, Austin Aries, Moose and uh, Killer Cross promo. And I, I thought this was, was excellent. And uh, uh, all credit to, to Mackenzie Mitchell as well in this segment. She's been brilliant in interviewing these guys. And I just love the way that she's freaked out by Moose. Um every every week that how he comes on to her in some fashion uh, but I, I just thought all three of them were, were great in the way that they delivered their promos and you know moose as a heel is, is brilliant but the intensity that that killer cross gives off is, is just amazing yeah he stole this whole promo and i mean i love what he was saying about johnny impact he said you're like a plague you know any, everywhere you go and you're a virus like those words i just thought i was like whoa like that's really impactful um, yeah, he, he's the star of this group by far. And I think they're doing a great job of protecting him. Like, I know, it, you know, before I was kind of critical because I felt like, well, why did they align him with Austin Aries? I thought the way that they were going with him was fine. But I think now I've kind of uh, warmed up to this role with him where it's going to protect him. And I think when they eventually disband the stable, he's going to, you know, be the breakaway star out of this group by far. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, a fair play to, to Austin Aries. Oh, he's been excellent in this as well. I, I think he's been really, really good. You know, and, and as I said, you know, when we talked about the main event, these three guys are being treated as equals, which is it's quite unusual in a stable. So you've usually got a leader. And although Austin's has got the belt, they're not being portrayed as, as you know, wannabes. Look at OVE. You know, that that is the usual dynamic, isn't it? Where... You've got one leader and, and the two lackeys, LAX, OGs. All of them have got a figurehead. Whereas in this, they do seem like equals. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting where they're going to go. So you think that it's going to be Moose, Eddie Edwards, and then Killer Cross against, well, you just think he's going to be involved in the main event at ringside, something like that? Yeah, I don't think he's going to be in a match, um, like I said, because you're either going to put him, they don't want him to eat any losses right now. I'm just a, a believer of that. And I, I look at Bound for Glory as a way for a lot of the baby faces that kind of, you know, come up, you know, rise and come up, get their comeuppance in their feuds. So I can't see him being on the losing end. So I just see him probably uh, accompanying Moose and Aries in their respectable matches. But I could be wrong, obviously. I think you're most probably right. And uh, well, I'm torn on this one. Before I thought about it, I, I did think it might be a tag match. Well, against Eddie Edwards and a partner versus the two of them. However, when you think of the card that's lined up already, it's very tag heavy or trio heavy. And I don't think maybe throwing another a third tag match or fourth tag match on the card is going to work because you've still got to find a place of KM and Falabar. You've still got a place to, you know, Desi Hit Squad, 
or you know so that could possibly be another filler match on on, on the card so then that's another tag match so you've got to think you know where they're going to go with all this you know they've got to find somewhere for for these guys so it does make sense that most probably moose eddie edwards is a singles match and it could very well be that killer cross is with moose his backup and then Davy Richards is going to get involved that way. I don't, I'm thinking Davy Richards is coming back like I know something. I don't. I, I just. I know Sam Callahan tweeted about it as well, didn't he? Uh, saying that he's he's already claimed the eye of one wolf. How about making it a collection? So um, I, I does come back in, but I, I just don't know what the match is going to be yet. But that's good. You know, I think you do want to know some of your main events. And other ones you want, you know, building up so that I, I must see this at the pay-per-view. And that's the problem with something like Tessa Blanchard and, and Tyre, where it's out of the blue. Um, and same with Johnny Impact is out of the blue. Whereas at least when, whatever Moose and Eddie Edwards do at, at Bound for Glory, they've built it. So anyway, so next we had a backstage segment with Katarina has a gift for Joe Hendry and Grado. And um, yeah, Murder Clown. And to the guy who says that we don't do any research, I just want to let you know, I don't actually know we see the murder clown. I know nothing about him. So apologies in advance if I say that. I've no idea who this guy is and he turns out to be, you know, the top guy in the Crash Wrestling promo or something like that. Yeah, um, this is my first time hearing, hearing about him. Um, if I have time, I'll go and look him up. But all I, I just wanted to say with a lot of that, like, you know, I don't want to automatically assume who's a mid card and who's not you know the whole part of this is you know to for me to call out somebody out i like to be familiar with their work i just like i said i had taken it from an old comment where they were talking about impact guys working with lower tier wrestlers and it just i just thought that was a bad look if we're sending our best talent to work with you know enhancement talent so to speak so but anyways uh Wait, did that, you... i've just googled him i've just googled him bro Monster, uh, sorry, he, he is part of a, uh, a trio called Los Psycho Circus and Lucha Libre Chile, along with Psycho Clown and Monster Clown. There you go. So, so there you go. We, we've got some info on them. <laughs> he's he's um, actually, there isn't a, a Wikipedia page for him, unfortunately. Oh, there is one. Sorry, you, you carry on. <laughs> no, I was going to ask, what did you think of the GWN flashback? Ah, uh, GWN flashback. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It, it, it was excellent. It was really good. And uh, for once, uh, no, it did have AJ Styles in it. Sorry, I was going to say it didn't feature the guys you're on about. Uh, they're always in it. But it did have AJ and, and, and Daniels in it. But it did at least have Homicide and Hernandez in there as well. So I have no problem with that. And I thought it was an excellent match. It was really good, actually. I just thought it was funny because you look at the few... Yeah, you look at the few that we're having with uh, LAX versus the OGs, and uh, <laughs> you know you look in this match, and Conan was uh, managing the OGs at this time. So I kind of thought it would have been cool if they would have given some type of explanation, just for some of the fans who might be unaware of that, because you know this match happened. I think was it oh six, you know, and I don't know if people people were. You know the fans that are fans now were following the product, but yeah, this was great. Um, I don't get too mad that they show AJ. I mean, I've always said I think the GWN does a great job of showcasing AJ than where a AJ uh, works now. I know he's world champ, but I mean, the times that I've watched some of the pay per views, you know, he's never closing out the show, and you know, normally your world champ can close out the show. But hey, you know, I think we've talked enough about you know that other company, but. Yeah, overall this match this match was to show the OGs in a in a great light, but this this was really good. I remember, and you know the one thing that I think that goes under the radar for some of these people is, you know, you forget that during this this time I forgot when they actually broke away, but in the early thousands, mid thousands, it was the NWA TNA World Title, NWA TNA Tag Title, NWA TNA X Division Title. So, you know, when you hear that announcing and stuff, like, for some time, I don't know if they counted it for some people, but you had people who would win the NWA TNA championships, but never under the actual TNA umbrella. It's just an inter interesting uh, tidbit. But yeah, it's a great match. That, that jump that Styles did off the top was just amazing. And I know Hernandez did something similar a little bit later and he missed, but the, the one that the Styles did was just incredible. Um... By the way, uh, just to let you know, Murder Clown 
was in uh, the worst match of the year, 2015, on the Wrestling Observer newsletter. So <laughs> I have high hopes for Murder Cloud. <laughs> that he, he has some pedigree. So not only was he in the worst match of the year, uh, Katrina is in uh, one of the worst actresses I've ever seen every year. Uh, talking about it, my mate, my mate John. Hello, John, if you ever listen. Um, he's in a movie that's coming out this week, which has also got uh, uh, Catriona in it. There you go. Um, it's a zombie film. He played a zombie, my mate John did, but there you go. So, yeah, check that out. Redcon 1, I think it's called. Uh, at local cinemas, most probably not for very long, but catch it on a DVD at a petrol station near you very soon. Uh, yeah, that was a slight aside there. So where were we? Let's go back to the results. Um, so then we had uh, Scarlett Bordeaux do something, and uh, she said that she's going to be doing a worldwide talent search. I've got a feeling I know how they're going to play it. What do you think they're going with this? And this was part of my question. So let me just ask you, okay, because I think they're going to use this as a tool to either, and maybe just optimism on my end, I think they're going to use this as a tool to either debut someone or somebody that or repackage someone. And my question is, if you can choose, let's just say we'll just use on the roster right now, who will be the wrestler that you would pair with her? Mm, okay. Um, there aren't that many people who haven't got good defined characters at the moment that I can think of. I, I actually, I can't think of. Oh, this is a tough one, Road. It's a tough one. Can, can you think of anyone who could fit into that bill? Can you give me some names? Because you know, I'm just thinking. You know, KM and Falabar, they're, they're defined. You know, Matt Seidel, he's got his third eye shtick. Rich Swan. You know, he's obviously involved with Sidehouse so and maybe Rich Swan, possibly. Um, Desi Hit Squad, they got their thing going on. Eli Drake, possibly, but does he need Scarlet? Hell no. <sighs> DJ Z, I think he's about the only person I ever mentioned. Um, Johnny Impact, well, you can't really see that. You know, bearing in mind it, a sexy woman next to Johnny Impact, would Tyre really let that happen? So I, d I don't know. Who, who have you got in mind? Okay, and I, I wanted this was the question I wanted to give listeners. David this week. Arquette. <laughs> what I wanted to give the listeners this week, and who do you think would benefit from it? If I'm just going out on a limb, I would say D'Angelo Williams. Remember him, uh, the yeah, reti yeah. retired football player. We haven't seen much of him since the lead up to Slammiversary, so I think that'd be an interesting way to not only reintroduce him, but to give him, you know something something to do while he's trying to build his character up but i think though too I, the pairing that i see her with i think it's gonna have to be a heel like i would even say like a trevor lee but then i feel like if you do that you're talking about pairing her you know her managing the cult of lee i think if she was just managing trevor lee by himself i think that'd be well but i would go with d'angelo williams I, actually, I think I know who it's going to be. Now that you've made, now I've had time to think about it while you were talking there. I think it's going to be Beauty and the Monster, <laughs> the Monster Abyss. I think that she might do something with Abyss, possibly, because he kind of insinuated that he wasn't done wrestling yet. So, so possibly Abyss. There you go. Or even um, maybe Congo Kong. We haven't seen him for a few weeks. Well, I'm to him. Have we seen him since he fell in that swimming pool? I can't remember. No, last um, time we seen him, he lost the cage. But I mean, he has Jimmy Jacobs, though. So, I mean, you know, once again, I, 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 I would, the thing I would like is she needs to be paired with someone that could really benefit from it, like someone who's probably just kind of lost in the shuffle for the time being. And then you, you know, have her pairing, and then it kind of help elevates. I'd even say too, if he wasn't in the program that he's in right now, I think a Joan Hendry would have been ideal as well. If I'm being honest, I don't think it's going to end up being anyone. I think she's just going to really turn around and say, no one's good enough to be mentored by me. I'm the greatest. And and I, I just think it'll be a huge waste of time. There you go. That's <laughs> my go. prediction. <laughs> huge waste of time. Talking of which, <laughs> the Desi Hit Squad were next. Uh, <laughs> this is actually quite a good match. And I feel really sorry for the Desi Hit Squad because I like the two guys in it. I just hate Gamma Singh. And I've got a feeling that he most probably cut a longer promo here because all that happened was he said, let me introduce you to the pride of India, the Desi Hit Squad. And, it, and he seemed out of breath 
the moment he started talking. So he must have done something. He must have done something else other than just say, "I'm introducing the Desi Hit Squad," because it sounded like you know I, I don't know what I'm saying. It you know it just seemed weird to me. But it, he's hopeless, and the sooner they get away, f- I, I quite like the idea of the fact that he keeps on beating them. But all right, enough already. Let, let's get them as a proper tag team and uh and get them going but I, I enjoyed the match though i thought the match was excellent and you know i you know i loves me a bit of lax <laughs> yeah you know when he cuts the uh when he introduces him he just sounds so unenthusiastic he's like the pride of india the does he hit squad like <laughs> like he feels like he's being compelled um <laughs> you're right it's like you know when i take my 10 year old say sorry to your sister sorry <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's so disingenuous, isn't it? Yeah, the pride. Yeah, they're really, really proud of, of these guys. Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, the pride. Yeah, Desi. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's crap. But anyway, uh, go on. As far as the match, I mean, typical LAX. I mean, you know, we got to see them pull out all, you know, their offense per usual. You know, I don't, I kind of just feel like a match like this, this would have helped Desi hit squad so much more. Because we talk about time and time again, and I even seen it now, like, and we're not the only ones preaching this, that with LAX, what always seems to doom their title reigns is the fact that they run through everybody. You know, we never really kind of see them feud with someone for a long period of time. And, you know, like that, it's always, you know, they face someone, boom, and then it's on to the next. Like this feud with the OGs, you can argue, has been their longest feud and even though i know sometimes the tag titles are involved sometimes they're not but you know i just kind of just wonder with a group like this because we have a tag team scene but it just it, it could be better utilized and that that's something i want to we'll, i'll save towards the end because there was one um comment somebody made and well i'll, I'll reverse reserve it to the end of the cast okay well i, I was going to say that there's the easiest way they could have carried on this year, although I like the thing they did with Conan's mask and all that was great, um, which we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, why didn't they just have this for the tag titles and then to draw heat, you know, have the OGs cost the titles, you know, so then that way they could go on and, you know, that's why they're really pissed at them and why the ceasefire shouldn't go on because they've just lost the titles in a match they were clearly going to win. And then suddenly it's on the Desi hit squad and then you've got another match for, for Bound for Glory, whoever they want to face. So it, it just seemed a bit of a misstep to booking here. Although having said that, I really, really liked King's promo was outstanding. It was honestly one of the best promos I remember in a long time. It was outstanding. That and Killer Crosses, both of them absolutely nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Yes. I mean, I can't say it enough. His work has been, you know, I mean, he's just been amazing. And that's why it, it kind of and i'm not and i know we'll have our predictions later but i don't see how ogs come out on top of this and you know the thing that you don't want to happen is where you just have somebody cutting these amazing amazing promos only for them to fall short time and time again but uh the way that he really went in on conan you know bringing up eddie guerrero and art bar the late eddie guerrero and late art bar i should say bringing up mysterio i thought that one really cut deep because you know for those of you who who might um not be familiar with it but and i'm sure they have in mexico but i remember wcw they were like attached to the hip so i i really thought when he brought out mysterio and we all you know know mysterio's actively wrestling like that (laughs) that cut deep (laughs) no i thought thought it it was just outstanding and and uh yeah it was great a lot of credit as well by the way you know i've always been a huge santana fan and and, uh, both uh, the guitarist and, and the wrestler and um you know, he is really, really good. But Ortiz, I, I feel like, has really stepped up to the mark recently. And I don't know if he's got fitter or whatever it is, but it, he's been showing a lot more personality all of a sudden. And where once I used to think that Santana was going to be the, the, the Shawn Michaels, you know, now I think they're both on an even keel. The two of them are, are fantastic. And when it finally comes to splitting these guys up, if, which I'm sure they will at some point, you know, it's 50-50 who's going to be the genetic. It really is. It could be. I, I could actually see both of them going on to doing something. You know, they're both really, really good. I think it'll be a scenario where one will, like, I, I, I think they'll both. We both. They both have single champion 
uh, in their future, but one will be world title, world champion. The other will be X Division. If you had to ask me, I could actually see Santana winning both. Whereas with Ortiz, I could see him winning probably the X Division. I mean, mm-hmm. although his style, his his style comes across as more as a little bit hard hitting, but you know, since the X Division is the de facto mid card belt, that's the one I would uh, attribute to him. Fair enough. Anyway, moving on quickly, we had um, actually there was, there's not much more to go. So I, I thought we were running behind here, but we had Falabar reading KM a bed, bedtime story, which was funny. Um, weird setting again. You know, I talked about uh, Taya filming it in a bedroom. This was just a pink room with a fireplace, and it was just once again an odd setting, but it did make me chuckle. And I love these two guys. I, I think they're great. You know, and. I'm very rarely not entertained by anything these two do. But I do wonder where they're going to go with Fala. Um, because obviously KM saying, you know, you go and get revenge for me. So is he maybe going to face Killer in a singles match? Yeah, you know what? It You know, we don't know. You know, I, I just really feel like they really have missed an opportunity to really have them challenge for the tag titles. I know they've made mentions of it before, but not the big show, and they're over, and that's what, that's what you want. So, you know, who knows? We still got to think a couple more weeks leaving up to Bound for Glory, so maybe we'll get a match that hasn't even been announced, and it's, you know, a surprise match. But, yeah, it's it's interesting to see what they go do next with these two. Right, so that leads us on to the really the final section of the night because you know we've already covered the main event. So we, we had Tessa accept Tyre's challenge, so that looks like that's all set, uh, which is fine. Uh, is, do you want to comment anything on that? Because personally, I don't think there's anything really to talk about there. Yeah, not really. Carry on. Nope. Okay. Yep. So so then we had um, the undead bridesmaid Udmo <laughs> and, and Sue Young taking on. Kira Hogan and Ali, and uh, uh, yeah, I've got a, f- a few things I want to, I want to say about this, but none of it will be any surprise to you. But what, what did you make of this one? I thought the star of this match was the Undead Bride. Um, obviously, it wasn't Casey Spinelli this week, but whoever she is, man, um, I want to see more of her. And if she, I don't know where her status is, but bring her on board. I mean, you can keep her. As Are you sure that wasn't Casey Spinelli? No, you sure that wasn't Casey. No, Spinelli? no, this just even the way that she worked and you know the body and all this and that it was totally different. This was a, somebody totally different, and you know she really shined in this. So that's somebody that you know I don't know. You know when they're talking about the undead brides, you know they're just bringing in you know folks from the indies just to work that particular show. But yeah, I, I want to see more of her. Yeah, absolutely, and. You know, I, I I don't know how they turn that person into that character, unless there's some kind of like a exorcism somewhere down the line or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, it will be interesting. But once again, I, I can't say it enough. Ali just stinks up the ring every time she's in it. And I'm getting to the stage now where we talk about who's going to be let go if they bring in David Arquette. There you go. I'll start the petition now. Let's get rid of Ali. I, I've, I'm done with her, honestly. You know, I don't particularly like a character. I don't like it when she's doing this pouty, serious stuff or, you know, or looking up to the skies and doing, you know, acting on par with Katarina's. And then she gets in the ring and she's not very good in the ring either. Uh, well, she's, in fact, terrible in the ring. There's, you know, people, I wouldn't say she's rebel bad, but she's close. You know, I don't feel that same way. I just kind of just. Um they need to separate Ali and Sue Young. Like, why can't, is it hard for them to find these two women to do something else? Like, if you would have had, and I know we're, when we get into it towards the end, they announced Kiara versus Sue, Sue for next week. Why couldn't we just get that this week? And you have Ali accompany, accompany Kiara. I just, for me, it's just seeing the same set of matches over and over. It just comes across as lazy booking. And, you know, Ali is uh, accomplished enough where you can have her work down on the card a bit. It's not going to hurt her. It's really, they they have nothing for her, but, you know, she's a popular enough star where they feel the need to, you know, have her on TV and, you know, throw her in matches here and there. But I really like to see her be better utilized elsewhere, not just facing Sue Young. You know, I, I thought this feud was over with. And another thing is as well, why the 
the undead bridesmaid not taking the pin on this one. I mean, has Sue Young upset someone backstage? I, I, I mean, there's no way in a match like this where you've effectively got three characters and a jobber, why is the jobber not taking the pin? I, I, I just, to me, it, first of all, as you said, it was lazy booking to put the match on in the first place. And to not have and to have Sue Young take the pin, honestly, I, I, it's just a complete misstep. This match for me, it's a shame, really, because you know, I, I, I you know, Hogan has really grown on me. Um, Sue Young, I think, is a great character, and as you said, Udmo was 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 great in this match, and I, I just don't see where they're going. At. I'm guessing it's it might be a casket match at Bound for Glory, which Andy finally wins. I, I'm guessing that's where this will go. At some point, with Rosemary coming back to help her, possibly. Um, I mean, I don't know. The only thing I could think of is now because they announced it that we're gonna get Kiera versus Sue Young. So maybe that's a feud. Like it looks like it was designed to get Kiera a big win, but I think if they really want to do Kiera a good service, they need to separate her from Allie because we only see her in backstage segments, you know, playing sidekick. You know, we need to see her wrestling on her own. Allie can accompany her, but. You know, like I said, the only time we've seen her wrestle as a lady has been some type of iteration of Ali and Kara versus Sue Young and the Undead Bridesmaid. And as far as Sue Young, um, I don't know if she's pissing anyone off. I think, you know, same thing with Ali. They don't know where to thrust her. I really thought they could have done a feud between her and Tessa and they would have been fine. That could have been the feud that you have up until you find a new challenger for Bound for Glory. But obviously we get the title rematch, and then that was the end of that. So, you know, we just have to wait and see, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so that pretty much um, finishes off the show, because we, we've obviously covered the main event. Um, I don't think there was anything else that, that jumped out, other than the fact that I was glad that Josh Matthews picked up on the fact Don Callis was wearing his cap on top of his headset. Because uh, so that was pretty bugging me again. So, uh, you know, as I said, I'm sure they're listening to our show. So, uh, Josh, Don, Scott, all of you, thanks for, for tuning in this week. And if you haven't hit subscribe, please make sure you do. Because I wouldn't want you to miss uh, my creative genius anytime soon. So, was there any other thoughts about tonight's show, Ro, before we finish up? I think the last thing we, we uh, forgot to mention was the Swan and Seidel promo. And um, I don't know how you felt about it, but it felt flat for me. I'm just at the point, you know, I, I thought a, f uh, a feud between them had a lot of promise. But I, I think we're getting it next week. So I'm just kind of like get it over with and move along with both guys. Fair enough. Right. So what have we got on next week's show? Um, so we got advertises Joe Henry, Henry, I'm sorry, versus Murder Clown. Rich Swan versus Matt Seidel, Eli Drake's Open Challenge, and Sue Young versus Kiera Hogan. Actually, there was there was one thing we didn't mention. Um, it wasn't in my spoilers here. We had a, a little Rich Swan segment where he touched. Um, yeah, that's what I was uh, referring Matt to. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Go ahead though. Yeah, we we missed that. Anyway, all right. So so next week, yeah, more of the Mexico tapings, which thus far haven't set the world alight for me anyway. Uh, hopefully it's going to be good and uh, yeah uh, let's get that that trivia question one more time for our listeners yes um, so okay the three clues obviously it are I once did a weigh in to compete in the X division not realizing that the X division had no weight limits I've also been under multiple gimmicks worked under multiple gimmicks and also I was in a few with a former world championship over something that was mine that led to my departure. Who am I? Okay. And uh, the question that I asked during the show as well was just your thoughts on David Arquette. Would you like to see him in Impact Wrestling and how do you think he should be utilized? But um, yeah, that's us for this week. Make sure uh, you hit the subscribe and leave us any questions you would like us to cover next week on next week's show in the comments section. But for the time being, that's uh, me saying goodbye from, from me and Ro. Good night. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.